evening, everybody. You're listening to Radio Unfriendly. I am Steve. And I'm Scott. And this is the music podcast where we bring you music that we think you should be listening to, but you are unlikely to find on the radio. That's so, huh. right. Yeah. Playing lots of good stuff. We got a lot of really cool stuff for you, uh, just like we did last time. But we've, yeah, we've got a lot more music to play for you tonight. We've got some really fun stuff. Um,. And we've actually got an interesting topic to talk about tonight. We're going to be talking about um, more or less the death of physical media in, mm-hmm. in music. Um, before we jump into that, uh, what's been going on with you? Uh, well, so we haven't had our spring weather yet here. It's still been raining. And so, frankly, not a lot's been going on with me other than cruising through all the music apps and hearing all the new stuff <laughs> just listening to new music yeah. yeah yeah i haven't been out much um everything has been getting canceled you know it's just a bummer it's seattle <laughs> yeah um are you still going to be doing the um if i remember the name correctly the gambler yes sir yeah we're about a okay. month away from uh the oregon gambler 500 that's the one i go to and uh, cool. I, I still plan to go over there. Yeah, a friend and I from here are going to go down, and it's probably like uh, seven hours or six hours to get down there, but it's worth it. It's oh, wow. pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, um, why don't you explain that a little bit for the folks that don't know what the gambler is? Yeah, well, We're sure. not talking about the Kenny yes. Rogers song. No, no. And and it's funny, too, because I have a Gambler 500 hat and like an old man stopped me one day and he's like, what, what's with you? Do you like casinos or something? <laughs> so it, it, maybe it's a bit of a misnomer. But uh, yeah, so uh, for those that aren't familiar, the Gambler 500 is like a, this combination uh, navigational challenge slash car show and rally but uh it's all beater cars every car is uh you know a rust bucket and or like modified in some way to look uh like it came off the set of mad max um (laughs) and uh yeah like the original so so it started like who knows how many years ago now but but a while back and and the original tagline was like um try to go 500 miles in a $500 car off road. <laughs> but you know, now it's like $500 isn't really realistic even for um, a, a jalopy. So, <laughs> but yeah, my friend uh, up here, he's got an old Ford Ranger and it was actually um, stolen from out in front of his house uh, just a few months back. And uh, it was, you know, taken for a joyride and he thought he'd lost it, but the police did find it later and it was all beat up and, you know, the seats are torn and the glass is broken out. So it's the perfect car for the Gambler 500. So we're going to go down in that. (laughs) Very cool. I actually found a link to uh, something called what is the Gambler 500. And uh, I'm going to put that in the show notes for you folks. Awesome. You know, I, I forgot to say something really important about it. Um, it's it's also not just for silly fun. It's it's also uh, for a good cause. Uh, so everybody who goes on this 500 mile, you know, navigational rally out through these forest service roads also picks up trash the whole way. And um, they've picked up like hundreds of tons of trash throughout the years off of our uh, national forest. So it's really awesome. Nice. And you were saying they actually have um, this event in uh, Michigan as well. Right. Yeah, it kind of spread out through a lot of the different states. So usually states have their own kind of like local chapter and they put on one or more events every year. This one in Oregon, uh, it's the like that's where it originated. So so it's kind of the big meetup, but all the different chapters have their own thing, too. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. So anything else going on? Not for me. What's going on with you? I, I heard you caught some good shows recently. Um, well, I, I went and saw Bad Cop, Bad Cop a few weeks ago. That was a really good show. 
Great band. Um, um, I went to a local show a few days ago, and it was, I mean, it was, uh, it was okay. I actually ended up leaving early. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, I mean, mostly what's going on with me is still getting the house ready, packed mm-hmm. up, and because our we actually close um, on Monday, uh, next Monday, um, and then everybody but my son and I uh, are leaving for Michigan, um, and then I'm basically waiting here until I can get him into the dorms, which will be kind of uh, late June mm-hmm. and and then I'll head up there. Um, but yeah, for those of you who don't know, I actually currently live in Oklahoma, uh, but we are all about to move. Well, with the exception of my son, um, we are all moving to Michigan. Uh, the reason he's not moving is because he is uh, staying here in Oklahoma to go to college. Good deal. Uh, so you got like a month and a half left there still yeah me but but i still have to get the house because like i said we close on monday so i i mean i'll be moving out of this house this weekend oh jeez. and then uh so my son will actually still be in school for like another week so i'll be like renting a kind of an extended stay hotel Mm -hmm. for that last week um gotcha. and then after that uh well we'll see we'll figure out where we're gonna stay for for a month but uh, <laughs> we got some we got some ideas we'll figure it out um but yeah other than that other than moving um my band just put out our i guess our last ep on friday so that was cool. so good it's awesome man I, I listened to it you know i went and bought it and um the uh, it's the second track, uh, "Confessions of Faith," right? Just love yeah, that. Yeah, "Confession one. of Faith." Yeah, that's that's probably my favorite on the on the EP. I really like that one. Uh, yeah, that's actually one of the out. new ones. Um, yeah, it basically consists of two brand new songs, and then the rest of the EP is material that we recorded a few years ago, but never made it on any of our previous releases. So we decided to just go ahead and put them out. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I think, I think my favorite is that second one as well. But, uh, yeah, if you're interested, you can find that out on Bandcamp. Um, um, so I've been, the Bandcamp link, uh, I've been I'll just put it in the show notes. Then. Mm -hmm. um while you think of that so was this um so you said that like some of the songs are from a few years back so is it different lineups are the songs representative of kind of like different phases of the band or is it all the same people no this is it's interesting that you asked that actually get fired uh this lineup uh that we recorded this last ep with um is the original lineup and all of the songs are from the original lineup Oh, cool. uh, the reason I keep saying ori- original is that the original lineup split up a few years ago, um, and I I got the band together with another lineup uh, where we did play some of these songs, um, but we wrote some new stuff, um, but we never recorded anything, uh, like in a studio or anything like that. Um, and then when gotcha. I when I announced to those guys that I was moving to Michigan, uh, basically we just decided to split up. And then the original lineup and I were just chatting uh, one day, and because uh, I mean we still keep in touch, we're still pretty good friends. Um, and we were talking about like recording a couple of songs before I left for Michigan and those two new songs are what became of that discussion. <laughs> uh, and then awesome. we decided, you know, let's, re- let's release some of the stuff that we did not release before. Um, so that's, that's what happened. It must um, be kind of bittersweet. Cause it's like, it's like, it Oh, is. here, now here's a new recording. And then it's like, and see you later. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. I'll, I can only yeah. imagine. It's, it's weird. 
But um, <laughs> yeah, that that other lineup, the only thing that exists. Um, so we have a live video that's on YouTube that I actually um, uh, kind of pulled the audio from it and did some cleanup uh, of those recordings mm -hmm. uh, as audio files. So I have audio files uh, that I could actually release as a live album, which I thought of doing. I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Oh, cool. But, yeah. And that's got some of the stuff that we actually recorded or not recorded, but uh, writ, wrote at, at, with that lineup. So, yeah, interesting stuff. Um, You're teasing yeah, us here. It sounds like we might see another release at some point. <laughs> we'll have to keep an eye on your band camp. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> so I put the uh, I put the Gan band camp link in, uh, in the show notes. Um, so it's getfired405.bandcamp.com. Uh, it'll be in the show notes. Um, but yeah, that's really all that's been going on. Work still. Uh, mm -hmm. I started watching Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> oh, I like that one. That one's cool. Yeah, I, yeah, I never watched it. I mean, it. my, my uh, brother-in-law was saying he, you know, he doesn't like that one. Because to him, Star hmm. Trek isn't action. But I was like, well, the action's cool too <laughs> yeah i liked it um no i actually uh the reason i started watching it is i i heard about this um the new show strange new worlds yeah and i watched the first episode um just because i felt like watching it see what it was and i actually i like anson mount as an actor um which is why when i heard he was playing christopher pike in Strange New Worlds, um, uh, I was like, oh, I'll check this out. Uh, and then a buddy of mine, uh, Dave uh, Brown, was telling me that he played that character in Discovery as well. I was like, oh, well, maybe I should go back and start watching Discovery. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm I'm watching that. I'm, in, I'm still in the first season. I think I'm about episode eight or nine. I, I yeah, somewhere in there. Good stuff, yeah. But so far, I'm enjoying it, yeah. Cool, cool. Nice. Well, hey, why don't we uh, why don't we get on to some music? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you want to introduce this first one? Uh, yeah, okay. So so this first song um, is from a band called Fuss, and uh, this is really funny, actually. It has two connections to um, last episode. So, first of all, oh. it was produced by the guy that played bass on that Bruce Lee band track, the okay. I Hate This Song. And then the second one, so yeah, it's wild, right? The second thing about it is that um, one of the members in the band is a, also a member of Joyce Manor. So, it's got those oh, two. We, we like mentioned both of those bands last episode. Yeah. Yeah. But this is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, a band called Fuss, and uh, they they released this earlier this year. This song's called "But It's a Dry Heat." He said.
Yeah, so that was But It's a Dry Heat by the band Fuss. And, uh, yeah, so where yeah. are they from? I think they're from, uh, well, the guy that sings, I think he's from San Jose, California. Okay. That's what I read anyway. And uh, what I was going to say, um, here's the thing about it, right? Uh, I think I'm kind of a sucker for songs like this because, you know, I grew up in the 90s. And it sounds just like one of those 90s bands. I instantly thought of um, Fountains of Wayne, actually. That's what it reminded me a lot of. You remember them? Okay. Yeah, I do remember them. Um, so this is not... Okay, there's there's a band called The Fuss out of Detroit, but this is not the same band. Um, no, I really like this. It's, I mean, really strong, simple song. Yeah. Um, real nice, simple chord progressions. Um, so the, the singer's voice actually reminded me and and this is not in any way a bad thing, uh, kind of reminded me a little bit of Weird Al. Oh, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there was this band uh, from, I don't think they're still around, but I used to, I listened to one of their albums, like, back in the early 2000s. They were called Fillmore. Um and that that singer kind of reminded me of Weird Al too. So is I mean it was it was good. It fit the fit the music really well. Um, I actually listened to some of the tracks from the rest of the album, and they kind of all fit that same nice simple chord progressions, nice uh, just really simplistic uh, music, kind of that same mold. Yeah, yeah, um, it's really like like just tight and catchy. Did you know, did you read that thing where um, it's nine songs, but it's actually, uh, runtime is less than 16 minutes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds like a Get Fired album for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty Yeah, funny. I think, I think my favorite tracks on the album are uh, Western Wear mm-hmm. and uh, Turn My Brain Off. Oh, I like that Turn My Brain Off song too, yeah. Yeah, that, that was good, that was good. Um, well, why don't we jump into the next one? Uh, this is from the darts. This is, this is the U.S. based darts. There's a, there's a European darts too. Uh, but these, uh, girls are from Phoenix, Arizona. And, uh, the song we are going to play is Love Tsunami. Take me, I give up Crashing on my world 
All right, we're back. This is Radio Unfriendly. You just heard Love Tsunami by the Darts. What do you think of that one? Yeah, so um, I really like the batch of songs we have on this episode, but this yeah. one was standing out for me. Uh, it might be my favorite out of all these, just so you know. Yeah. Um, at, you know, when I the first time I listened, I was like, oh, yeah, why don't more bands um, show their B-52s influence? And then, but I was listening again <laughs> later and I was like, no, it's not quite right, actually. That's not really, I think, what they're pulling from. Later, I, I was getting like um, like underground garage rock, like The Mummies. I don't know if you're familiar with a band, with that band from San Francisco called The Mummies. Um, but they not have a, a song. Lot, but they have a song with organ. It's called The Fly that's just instrumental. So um, that was kind of what I thought of. And then I also started to think of The Cramps, too, the, when I was listening back. But I really liked this. I'm, I'm glad you picked it. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. I hadn't thought of the Cramps reference. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I I really like the the whole garage uh, kind of fuzz yeah. thing uh, yeah, me they've too. got going on. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is one of my favorites from this this week's as well. Um, I wouldn't say my absolute favorite of all the songs that we pulled for this episode, um, but probably probably up there in the in the top three <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, okay, so before we jump into our next music uh, pieces, um, we kind of had a an idea for a topic to talk about on this episode. Because um, we haven't quite gotten to the point where we're doing um, interviews yet. Uh, so until then, um, we're just going to come up with some random topics. And I, I think this episode is going to be a good one. Why don't you kind of launch us into it? Yeah. Well, so, um, you know, probably everyone listening is familiar with the idea that the CD is dead. Like people have been saying that for a while. But then in like January, it was suddenly there were all these news headlines like the CD is making a comeback. So, <laughs> so I saw this article that had come out um, being shared online between like people in the tech industry um, who don't usually comment much on on the music industry. And um, the article was saying like the idea that the CD is coming back is actually a lie. And so um i just you know it really caught my attention that there was all this focus this year on the on the uh music industry and like what they're able to sell or not but i thought i'd ask you steve like if you buy any physical media anymore and uh if so what you know and then I, we can talk about it a little more like why um trends yeah the way they are um so Yes and no. Um, I actually don't buy CDs anymore. Mm -hmm. um, almost all of the music, almost all of the music that I listen to uh, at home uh, or in my car is through some digital medium. Um, usually it's going to be either Bandcamp Spotify or Apple Music. Um, but I still do buy records. Like vinyl? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, like vinyl records. Um, but, but yeah, CDs, I, I don't even own a CD player anymore. Yeah. I own, I own a record player. Um, don't own like a, a cassette player, um, which I'm, I'm hearing that cassettes in some way are kind of starting to make a comeback, but yeah, that could be wrong as well. <laughs> <laughs> Who uh, knows, right? Um, yeah. I but, definitely... uh, yeah. Yeah, I see. I do see like bands releasing cassettes, and I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just like a weird 
hipster thing to do or something, but um, I see it quite regularly these days. And uh, but I still don't buy cassettes. We we still have an old minivan <laughs> to, to maybe to share more personally than I should. But but yes, I drive a minivan and it has a cassette player in it. So I've been like thinking, oh, maybe I should get cassettes because I actually have I could <laughs> listen to something on my commute, you know. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I stopped. So I still own a, a crap ton of CDs, but they're in storage. Um, I haven't touched them for a long time. I didn't want to get rid of a lot of my CDs. Like I have um, CDs that you can't really get anymore or ever, like because it was all from like local bands, you know, at the time, wherever I might have lived. So I've got like a huge box full of those. And I have like stuff that, of course, I'm sure everybody has like I have almost every AFI CD up. no I think I do have every AFI CD like up through um what's the one after seeing the sorrow where I was like uh, I'm not gonna listen to AFI anymore <laughs> but uh it was like called misery or something the, the one with miss murder um but, yeah I'm uh, trying to know, remember the name um, of it too that's around the time I stopped collecting CDs. So someone look up what whatever year that was released. But yeah, and then I would say mostly I try to do December Bandcamp. Underground. Oh yeah, that's right. It's all one word too, huh? December yeah. Underground. Yep. Yeah. Do you have a year on that one? Like uh, it must have been two thousand six uh, or something like that. That was two thousand six. Okay. Good. My memory's not too terrible. But yeah, yeah, so, um, and then someone, you know, like, I don't condone this necessarily because it feels kind of corporate, which isn't my thing, but um, someone gave us a Sonos, uh, Sonos One speaker one year, so you can, like, just kind of, like, digitally hook up everything you ever would want to listen to through it, you know? Like, it has every, has all the podcasts you want to listen to, and YouTube music, Apple music, Spotify, whatever it is you're into. So it just like, it was too easy because it doesn't take up too much space, you know, and I have a, I have three kids. So like they, all their stuff takes up all the space. <laughs> so, um, of course, that's, yeah, that's my, that's my go-to or if I'm on my phone. So mostly I am streaming these days. Like I bet most people are, but, uh, you know, even so, okay, here's, here's one of my thoughts about this is like, I'm like you as far as like, I'll buy physical media if I think it will support the band in an especially particular way. Like I even did that before. Like I used to buy colored right. vinyl releases of bands if they put them out, even though I didn't, I've never had a, um, a turntable. So you know, I'll still do that because yeah. it, it's like one way that bands make money still. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like there's a uh, there's a band, a local band that I went and saw uh, a couple months ago. And I, I had already bought their newest EP um, digitally through Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was like the show for them was essentially like a um, a vinyl record release party for the same EP and I ended up buying it just because I wanted to give them money <laughs> so yeah and that's a good uh, thing to do right because like we all yeah. know that usually bands end up with a couple boxes of their stuff in their closet <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't I know that. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> um why don't, why don't we come back to this subject? Yeah. Um but let's let's play some more music. Cool. Well, the next one we have for you all out there is um, a song I picked out and it's yeah. from a band called The Roxies and yeah. uh, I've been digging this one a lot. So this is uh, Underdog by The Roxies. Check it out. I 
I ain't a baker Or oh, you see my love is all for free Yet I see there's something, something in your pocket for me I said, said impatiently Absorb another routine Yet there's something in your pocket for me Well, I Tradesman. I'm sorry, it's something I can't be Yet I see there's something, something in your pocket for me I said, take it patiently I give a sigh of relief, there's something I'll never be There's something in your pocket for me back with berlin's own the roxies that was underdog uh so steve how do you feel about that one (laughs) oh dude i this is if i had to pick one favorite for tonight this is probably it um for sure this one this one actually this band actually has a kind of a roundabout uh connection to a band that we played last time um the cool. album they put out, uh, by the way, I love the name of the album. The album is Don't Want to Dance Because I'm Told To. I know, that's so good. <laughs> um, but the album was released on um, it, Dirt Cult. Uh, Dirt Cult Records, uh, which was the same label that released uh, Dead Years that we played on the first episode. Oh, uh, nice. That's a good interesting, connection. Yeah. Interesting enough, enough, both of these bands are from Germany. So I kind of wonder if Dark Cult is a German label. I did not look that up, but hmm. uh, it might could be, be something that uh, could, it could be. It could be. But okay, getting into the music. I uh, loved it um, right away. Uh, this band reminded me of a band uh, that I really like. Uh, called the thermals uh have you ever heard of the thermals i've heard of the thermals i don't think i've listened to much thermals though oh man i'm a huge fan of the thermals love these guys so yeah right away this they reminded me of the thermals and the thermals are uh inactive now they they broke up a few years ago i know Um, but yeah i listened to that you know this song and then right away i wanted to listen to the rest of the album um it's and good. loved loved the rest of the album too um you know if you if you haven't out there if you haven't heard this album um it's you know called don't want to dance because i'm told to uh but definitely worth your time to uh to check this album out you'd be uh doing yourself a favor yeah it's pretty new too I, it came out uh january 21st yeah. And uh, it's on it's on Bandcamp. So check check the show notes page because the link will be there. Uh, yeah, Steve, I thought like um, as soon as I heard this, I was like, man, if if these guys had come out with this album in, say, 1979, we would all be considering this a classic right away. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like we're 
a little effusive about this one, but it really, it really is good. Yeah, they're. I mean, basically, they're kind of like a a really loud indie punk rock band. Yeah, um, there's that section in the middle of it, right, where it like changes gears, slows way down. I don't know if slows way down is exactly right, but it, it, you're just like in a different place all of a sudden. But it also works really well, and you're just like, how did they oh, do yeah. that? You know? So, yeah, that's some skill, no, I that, think. Yeah, this is just this is a band that I'm um, definitely going to be keeping keeping track of um, for sure. I, I, I you know I started following them on uh, Bandcamp so that I can know. You know what's what's going on with them later and then uh yeah yeah definitely definitely a band um you should be checking out there they're just there yeah they're, uh, if you're a fan of the thermals uh definitely check them out if if you have no idea who the thermals are um you should probably be checking those guys out too <laughs> i know i will uh, yeah yeah um so let's see next song we've got we actually talked about this song last week yeah Um, i mean these are this is a heavy hitter of the punk scene and any release they put out is going to make waves yeah so it's i think it's been a while since we've heard from these guys um as far as recorded uh, 2016 yeah yeah so So that's six years wow yeah yeah so they are from Simi Valley, California. Uh, they are called Pulley. And the song that we're playing is from their new album, which comes out. Uh, I think I have a June 10th release date over here. Yeah, I think I, I think yeah, I know it was in June. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the name of the album is the same as the name of the song we're playing. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is the title track off of the new album, uh, "The Golden Life."
All right, that was The Golden Life with, uh, I'm sorry, that was The Golden Life by Pulley. Um, and I'm trying to think what label that's coming out on. Oh, oh, we talked about that last last week. It's on of uh, Sabam Records. Is that, like, I've been trying to figure out how to say this record label's name. Like, do I say S-B-A-M? Do I say Sabam? Do I say Spam? But but I like how you say it with there with the sabam. Yeah, I just yeah I just started saying sabam. So I you mean, know, um, you you kind of told me about sabam last episode. I I started to look up like I googled s u b dash a m. That's what I thought you were saying, <laughs> like sub pop, uh, okay. but with sub am. And then I was like, no, that's not right. And somehow I I think I must have searched for the specific band or something but the a has an like an umlaut over the top of it ah so it's, it's weird it's like i don't know if it's affected or if it's from a different country too but you know yeah, like motorhead know, really puts know. a they put a umlaut over their o so yeah i don't i don't know because some of the other bands that are um on that label are not uh, well, Poli included are not, um, you know, uh, bands from foreign countries. They're all, right. they're all d- domestic. Um, so I don't know. I'll Maybe have I'll have to, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I'll have to look into it and, uh, we can talk about it on the next show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we can explain to everybody. What is the history of Sabayon Records? Yeah, that'd be a good one. So, um, Pulley, man, it's it's they've always been one of my favorite punk bands. Just and and it's so pure too. It's like their sounds never never wavered. It's you know like other bands went through different trends. You know, like through the two thousands, a lot of bands turned into that kind of like emo punk thing that was happening. But Pulley was just like, no, we're yeah. not going to do that. We This is what we sound like. And there's literally, like, every time I pull open a Pulley track, I'm worried that they're going to take it off in some other direction. So when I heard this one, I was like, okay, is it still going to sound like Pulley? And I was like, oh, it does. <laughs> so there's something about it where I was just like, oh, thank goodness. I love it. It's so it's so Pulley. It just doesn't change. And it's nice that that's the case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Um it's just, you know, yeah, Pulley is just one of those good examples of uh, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, there's very few bands, in my opinion, that that works for. Uh, you mentioned Motorhead. That, that's kind of one of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, for sure. Don't, don't mess with that. Um, ACDC, I would say, is another one. Agree, a hundred percent. I'll give you one that that like I know causes controversy. Pennywise, like any Jim Lindbergh version of Pennywise. Anyway, it always sounds the same. And I know people who are like, no, I'm over it. And the people who are like, I don't care that there's ten other albums that sound just this way. I still love it. Yeah, I I mean I like I like Pennywise. So as far as Pulley, though, um, it's interesting. I, I'm curious to see, like, how they're treated in 2022, you know? Like, what you know, because like you said, it's been six years since the last album. I'm wondering what their fan base is like. But if the uh, views on the YouTube video are any indication, they're just fine because it already has thousands and thousands of views. And yeah. that's just the video, so. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's just, they are what they are, and, and people, there's one of those bands that, like, you either really like them, or uh, you've never heard of them. <laughs> yeah, basically, right? You're like, what, what are these bully yeah. shirts about? Must be an industrial yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. I, I mean, I know, I know some people that, uh, you know, I was talking about, like, Oh man, Pulley's got a new album coming out, and they're like, "Who's that?" Oh, oh come on, guys. <laughs> maybe, maybe the people who are like, "Who's that?" will finally come around, and you know, 
That's one of the best things is when you don't know about a band and then you're like, oh, wait, they have a whole discography I can go discover. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what I think is the great thing about like the premise of this podcast. We're like playing stuff that you probably haven't heard. 100%. Yeah. Um, Do we, so, so we have more to talk about about physical media, don't we? Yeah, I mean, we got a little bit we can probably still say. Um, I was wondering, I, like, I, so I now asked, that we've talked about cassettes, um, what do you think you're likely to actually go buy cassettes? Unlikely. Yeah, no. I, I assume I, I, that um, you had quite a few at one point in your life, like me. Oh, I, I, I did, yeah. In <laughs> fact, uh, in fact, the first band... Um, that I was I was in, uh, which was called ABF. Um, our, you know, the one and only thing that we recorded, uh, the only the only medium we recorded it on, was uh, was a cassette. Yeah. And and at that time, um, you know, CDs were around. You know, people were buying CDs and. Mm-hmm. Uh, people, like you know, bands were making. Yeah, they were making CDs and stuff like that, but it was very expensive at that time. We're talking. Yeah. Uh, that was 1995. Um, I definitely see- remember going to like uh, I think it was a Rite Aid. I, so I lived in a small town around that time, and I remember mm-hmm. like um, I actually was given a CD boombox a little while earlier than this, but I saw like. Okay, CDs are twenty dollars. Cassettes are like fourteen, and I'm a broke high school kid, so I guess I'm buying cassettes. <laughs> yeah, like at that time we were we were you know broke college students basically, um, and you know we didn't have enough money to get like CDs were expensive to uh, manufacture and and produce. So we just, 100%. it was just like, I'll just do it on cassette. Um, I love the culture around cassette because like people would just like hand you a tape and they'd just be like, you know, I made, I made you a tape full of all my favorite songs. Check them out. Because like, you know, yeah. that was like, there was no online then. So like what would happen is someone would just hand you a random mixtape and you'd be like, sweet, I know what I'm doing tonight. I'm going to go listen to this. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing is like mixtapes were were huge back yeah, in the day. Such a big thing. <laughs> and yeah, it was so huge. Like you would make uh you would like record something off the radio. Oh yeah, I did that too. And, <laughs> yeah. And just make uh yeah, and just hey listen to the did you hear this new song? Yeah. It's on my yeah, but and and the thing about cassettes is they were so um they were so transportable um, be- because of their size. They were like the perfect size. You can just stick them in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, CDs, you couldn't really do that with. Plus until... they get all scratched up. And if you put them in your backpack, right, they roll around in there and just like. Right, right. Up. Well, I mean, even in the, uh, like in the, in the box, like the CD case, um, yeah, you you couldn't really like you couldn't put those in your pocket. Uh, no, but I mean, unless you were wearing cargo shorts, but I don't I don't think that was really a thing back then. The the um, cases were so annoying too because all the little yeah. spines that held them in yeah. the center would like pop out and like rattle around. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so yeah, cassettes were like so easy to just carry around. Um. Yeah, I trucked so, around yeah. with cassettes long after like CDs became a standard thing, like probably till the early two uh, thousands. Oh yeah, yeah, me too. Because I was able to find cassettes at like thrift stores and stuff like that, like so, yes. like so cheap and stuff that I still listen to. I was like, oh look, you know, and, and it'd, it'd be it fifty like, cents, you know. Like, exactly, I was gonna say, but <laughs> yeah, you could go to a pawn shop or a thrift store and find these things and. Uh, too funny, but, right? Yeah, but but that being said, 
the sound quality on them was not nearly as good as a CD or a vinyl record. Definitely not. And I think the biggest problem you had with a cassette is that they were, it was too easy for them to break. Like you could get, it could mm-hmm. come unspooled. Yeah, you remember. That was you remember awful. having to do the. You remember having to use get in the there pencil? with a pencil. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> say, it's so bad. If you you're like, I don't know where this tape goes. It's like winding around inside the case of my car, you know, cassette player. Now I gotta try and pull this tape out yeah. and see if I can recover any of it. And and you had to remember to label it somehow. Yeah, exactly. If it was a, if it was a copy. Of, of something because then like because i i would have like a box of of cassettes and i'd be like what's on this and i'd have to go listen to it just to see what it was um i know and and like did you ever buy the really long ones that are like 120 minutes like 60 minutes per side and you're yeah. like oh i could have four you know albums on this and then you're yeah. like i don't know which albums are on this or where <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly because a lot of those things that i bought they like didn't come with labels like that you could stick on oh like, yeah yeah like when you like some of them you would buy it at the drugstore or whatever and then you would have like a little sticker you could put on so you could label it but others wouldn't yeah so you just like and I, and you, I usually you're like trying to sharpie on like a black cassette and you're like this isn't gonna work that's horrible yeah i usually ended up buying the ones that had no labels. So I was like, I would like go get some masking tape or not masking tape, but like, uh, scotch tape. Oh, what is the, the, like, what's the brown tape? Oh, like, um, mail tape, I guess. I don't know what those are. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like that. Or, or I would get like a, uh, I would get like a whiteout pen. <laughs> oh, that's smart. <laughs> You're thinking there. I, I didn't uh, quite make it there. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's oh, too man. funny. You're making me realize the cassettes are hilarious, but they're still <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we play yeah. more music? I think we should. I think we should. Awesome. Uh, well, um, why don't you jump you know, into this next we're one? We're really heavy on like the California bands somehow. I didn't realize that. But uh, mm-hmm. this next one, also from California, uh, this is a band out of Sacramento, I think, but they're... Bandcamp also says San Diego and LA, so who knows? They're from everywhere, I guess. Everywhere yeah. in California. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the band's called Sad Girls Club. The song is I Think I'm Ready. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready.
That one was Sad Girls Club. I think I'm ready. Just some tuneful yeah. pop punk there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think what stood out to me most about this band and the song was uh, kind of the harmonies. Um, yeah, me too. I, I really like how they how they did everything together. I, I like I like that voice. Uh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, guitar work. Uh, God, what's his name? It's I was reading about it because I was like, who's this guitar player? Um, Randy Moore is his name. Um, real simple, melodic type lead guitar work. Uh, th- those are the type of, that's the type of guitar work that I, I like the most. Uh, just simple, melodic stuff that fits the song perfectly. Um, but yeah, yeah they, I really they like must this. all sing, right? Because it's like a trio, but you're hearing like th- a lot of voices there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I that's I think it is. A, I'm pretty sure it's a trio. Um, I, there was something they did at the end. I don't. I can't quite place my finger on what it was. It was either like a like a change in key, or maybe it was a change in time signature. Like it, toward it the might end have there. been just. You, I got distracted. Both. So, so honestly, yeah. I'll tell you why I picked this one out. It's because of the they do the whoa in there, and I'm just like, oh, I'm a sucker for any song that, that goes whoa you know? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, so yeah. the harmonies, like you said, and I, I'll have to go and listen to, yeah, what exactly is going on there. It's like right so, about just 20 seconds out from the end, right? Yeah, yeah, and it was it just made the song really like that much more interesting to me. Which is hard to do. I mean, you're talking only like a couple minute song few minute song i don't, yeah. I don't remember the length here yeah. but yeah <laughs> pretty cool yeah yeah um so next up is one of the songs that i picked um this is from the band cheer bleeders um where are they from they are from london uh, this is also a trio. Um, this is actually a trio. I'm pretty sure it's an all-female band. Pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the pictures now. They're, yeah, it's an all-female band uh, from London, UK. And the song we are going to play is Nail Biters.
All right, that was Nail Biters from London's Cheer Bleeders. This song was just released um, April 27th. Yeah, I think this one's a this is a lead for for an album that'll be coming out later this summer. So you're hearing it here first. Um, I thought that was great. That was like yeah. you know I was humming that to myself like the after the first time I heard it I was like oh yeah I'm humming along now. Just yeah, like what, that... I was out doing something else later and I was like humming the same you know I was humming nail biters. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Um, but yeah, you are right. That is, um, that is, um, they've got an album coming out, uh, and it's actually going to be their first, um, full length album. Oh, really? I thought um, they'd been so around a few years, right? Like I've heard they have, but they, yeah, they have been around a little bit, but they've only done, um, like EPs. Oh, cool. Um, so this is the first single off of an album that's coming out this summer. Um, don't have an actual date, but the name of the album is Even in Jest. Nice. Which is a cool title. Uh, and that comes out from uh, Alka Pop Records. Uh, that's a good record label name, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've, they've actually got some good stuff, um, Alka Pop. They've if you haven't checked out that label, you probably find a lot of stuff on there that you'll like. Well, now um, I know what I'm doing later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, true leaders, they, they kind of have that effect on you, don't they? They just, they kind of get in your head. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then um, I went and watched the music video of this. I don't know how I found out there's a video for it. But it's pretty funny. They're, they're um, like dressed up in clown, like the old school clown suits, like the kind with like um puffy dots for buttons whatever you call those things pom-poms for buttons and then um they take baseball bat and um beat up a cake like they destroy this nice cake so <laughs> yeah i cool actually video to watch yeah i actually found out about the song and the album uh first from a uh from a press release that was announcing the video. Oh, so yeah, cool. I saw the video before, before I even knew about the album, but yeah, it was a, uh, a press release, um, for the video. Um, and I listened to the video and then I was like, Oh man, I, I, uh, I need to play this song on our next episode. Very cool. Good stuff. Um, you is there anything else we need to say about cassettes? Probably not. I mean, we could wax eloquent about cassettes probably for a <laughs> while, but it would just be reminiscing, I think. Yeah. Um, so I mean, do you remember and I, I say that at the risk of not being able to answer it myself because I don't remember. Um, do you remember the last cd that you bought oh gosh okay um what was the last cd i bought i have no idea i'll i'll try to remember but i i have no it's, idea. it's okay if you don't remember because i i don't remember either i don't remember the last cd i bought i mean it's it was probably like a friend's band so like i was in a band called miracle max until 2010 so i'm sure i bought like cds from friends bands around that time but i don't think i was buying any you know like ma yeah label releases by that point but now that you mention it i think my last cd was <laughs> this is kind of amusing uh, from the same band that I just bought my last record from. <laughs> it was it was a different it was a different EP. Okay, but I'm pretty sure that was the last CD that I like physical CD that I bought. Yeah, I was gonna um, be, like laugh if you bought like the same thing, but you like got it on cassette and you got it on vinyl, you got it on CD. <laughs> no, no. I I wouldn't put something like that past me though. Yeah, you're um, like I really want to support these guys. <laughs> yeah, but. Before that, I 
honestly think that my last CD um, was... It was a Descendant CD. Oh, of course. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. I ah, uh, what was the name of that album? Was it the uh, one with it, um, the uh, it was, stupid American uh, song? Um, hi, it was uh, Hypercathium Spasinate. Yeah, I think in that's uh, 2016. I yeah, 2016. That's probably the last one I bought. Um, it's a hilarious title too. Especially yeah. for Descendants. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess more or less we could kind of probably agree that physical mediums of music are, are, are kind of dead. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think they, for at the, the very most least, part, on are, their but... way out. <laughs> I like the idea of having something, though. And so, like, to me, like, okay, I guess there is something more to say about cassettes. The, so the thing about cassettes is that um, the the cost to manufacture is pretty low. So I think if, if a band is playing live and they want to have something at the merch table, it, it may be the best choice right now. It could be, yeah. So... I mean, if also I because vinyl um, has like a huge shortage at the moment. So yeah, yeah, you're right, and 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 it's they're rather large, so you can't just shove them in your pocket. And yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I just at this point in time, I personally would not buy any cassettes because I don't have a cassette player, um, and I. More often than not, I am usually listening to music either while I'm working um, or I'm listening to it in my car. And I don't even think you can buy a car with a cassette player anymore. Yeah, I don't think you can either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be a special uh, feature. You'd have to go yeah. install it like yourself or something. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, well, we've got two more songs to play um, until we close things out for the night. So, yeah. Um, so, what's, oh, yeah. What's your next pick? This is a, surprisingly enough, another German band here. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to murder the song name here because it's in German. But the uh, song's called V. Er Sultani by Planet Y. Check it out. And we're back with V. Er Sultane from Planet Y. And uh, just a little factoid, I, I looked up V. Er Sultane in the Google Translate, and it means I am hungry. Uh, okay. <laughs> Surprising. So what is the name of the album that it comes from? Uh, so this is, so you're making me say more German, and I've never taken it, but I, <laughs> it's called uh, En Pladzi Solen. Something like that. Yeah. Um, I liked it. I um, like. I've liked everything that we played tonight. Um, 
I, I especially like the, uh, the dual vocals. Um, that's, that's another one of those things that I just, I really enjoy listening to is like when bands have, uh, dual lead vocals. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so I, I remember when you, when you sent this over to me and, uh, originally, and, and I was listening to it on Bandcamp, um, I forgot to switch Bandcamp off after the song was over and it just kept playing. Um, and I, I wound up listening to the entire album because I just really liked it. Um, you know what I like yeah. is like, I like that the song is like a minute and a half long only and they still have mm-hmm. a guitar solo. That's so good. Yeah. Like, it's just so funny. I think it, thumbs its nose uh, at rock songs like it's like ha we have a yeah. guitar solo and it's only a minute and a half <laughs> yeah uh i i actually like okay so i i did like this song uh a lot but i actually liked the song that comes next on the album more and, and it's probably my favorite song on the album uh it's called ivor ir Ginningstein. <laughs> Man, um, hopefully we'll put this stuff in the show notes because obviously we don't know how to speak. Yeah, it's either no, German I've got or Danish. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got it. I've got it in the in the show notes. Um, I I think these guys are actually Dutch and not German. I think you're right. I think that maybe the record labels just don't a German label. Um, probably, probably. I don't know. So, was, so like, let me ask you something, a, a point of etiquette. So um, when you're on someone's band camp page and it, it usually says like the band's name and then like a city. So is, is that city like, that's usually where the band is from, right? That's usually, yeah, that's usually where they're based out of. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm looking here. They're from, they are from, they are Danish. They're from Copenhagen. So I must've written that down wrong. Uh, but, well, like you said, it could it could be the record label. Yeah, but Copenhagen is in Denmark, so yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm looking I'll, at their band page now. Yeah. I gotcha. Well, so, yeah, because the reason I bring mistake. that up is sometimes. No, the reason that I bring that up is sometimes when you pull up a band on Bandcamp, you can only find them through the record label. Oh, right, that's true. Uh, so, like the record label could be based out of somewhere, but you can never through Bandcamp you can never find out where the actual band is from. <laughs> because they don't have their own band camp exactly yeah so um that title you you mentioned havor or Nisten, maybe um it means where is the spark oh nice nice yeah but yeah that whole album's really good right like there's there's a lot of songs too like they're all short but it's like you get a nice bunch of songs there yeah, you really do. Definitely, definitely something to check out. Um, and that one was released in January. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Lots of January releases here. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to keep them new, and New-ish. January is still not that not that far away, you know. Yeah. Um. So, uh, last song that we have to play. Uh, is from a band based out of Philadelphia. Um, they are called 500 Bucks. They have a, uh, a debut full length coming out. Uh, oh, actually, it's already out. It came out on April 29th. Um, well, what label? Uh, bah, 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 bah. No idea. Um, it this might be self released. Yeah, I was going to say. I think it is. Um, Which is the amazing. Band, yeah. But the band is actually um, kind of a punk supergroup. If your supergroup consisted of members from underground bands that a lot of people haven't heard of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, like I've heard of them. Like, um, and maybe you have, you have too. The band features members of The Holy Mess. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bella Vista Social Club and Captain Were Sinking. Oh, right, 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 yeah. 
Uh, Captain We're Sinking is a band that is no longer active, and, and I actually like them quite a bit. Um, that explains a yes. lot. Now yeah. I know why the quality is so high and it's self released. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, yeah, this song is uh, from that debut self titled release by 500 Bucks, and the song is called Animal. You just heard Animal from Philadelphia's 500 Bucks. And uh, what did you think of that one? So, you know, this is another. I told you like uh, a couple songs ago, I'm a sucker for, you know, bands that do woe-woes. I'm also uh-huh. really into this kind of punk where I think it, it kind of owes a lot to Strung Out. At least that's where in my life I first heard this kind of like almost... I don't know if it's metal influenced so much but you, you can tell it's like the super high gain you know like ivan has guitars with emg pickups and that kind of a thing and it's just fast and loud and um i don't know i always love music like this so it yeah. was reminding me of like a, a ton of other bands and um I, you know i don't think i heard anything original here but for me personally i don't have to like i just like a track like that and it made me want to hear the rest of the album which is you know that's the point of this lead off single here yeah. so yeah. i really liked it I, I think it's great they've got like like it was well played well recorded like I, I, there's almost nothing to complain about here yeah yeah good stuff good stuff from um i i mean i heard about the band uh again through a press release uh but the reason that i pulled it up and like because you know i don't necessarily read every press release i get yeah Uh, but um i've pulled this one up because i saw uh 
you know, members of Captain Were Sinking. And I was like, oh, okay, I got to check this out. Uh, but yeah, I liked it. Yeah, good, good stuff. Um, all right. Well, that's, um, I want to mention something. They, they have the lyrics on uh, Bandcamp for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, oh, you know, these lyrics never make any sense on bands like this because, like, strung out never made sense. I don't know. (laughs) But, um, you know, I guess that's not true. There were certain albums where strung out's lyrics were more elusive than others. But the, uh, yeah, the lyrics are really worth a, worth a read. I should. Uh, I just wanted to call that out. Like, like here's a band where there's some thought put into the the words. Yeah, sure. yeah. It's just not. It's it's not just goofy lyrics. It's just, uh, something they actually thought about. Yeah, but yeah. Cool. Um, well, that wraps up another episode of Radio Unfriendly. Um, hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoy making it. Because I always love talking about music. And, uh, yeah, fun stuff. And thank you. Thanks for listening. Absolutely. So check us out on our next episode. And um, spread the word.